All right, what's going on you guys? It's Resto, and in today's video, I'm gonna help you with your restoration Jared. So to start off with the bread and butter, we're gonna go over the gear. Um, this is what I'm currently wearing as we speak. Uh, this is what I have in game on at this current moment. Um, I'm gonna show you guys just about everything in terms of like what I plan on going for, uh, talent builds, you know, all that fun jazz. Uh, seen a lot of misinformation out there, and the guides currently that exist right now for Esther Jirids are just horrid. Um, so I can see why you guys are asking me constantly. Um, the biggest questions that I get all the time is, hey, what's your gear? What are your talents? And what runes? So I'm going to cover all that today, and hopefully I can get you guys the information that you need so that way you guys can continue to pump. So to give you guys a little bit of insight of exactly, you know, what we're looking at here. Uh, I've been playing Druid for about 20 years now. It's my been my main, my my baby class. You know, it's just my go-to. Um, you guys can check out other videos if you guys want to see more experience that I have. Uh, don't care to dive too deep into that. I'm trying to keep this video nice, short, and sweet. Uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome. Uh, the current build that I have right now is just kind of a mix match of you know current Nomer pieces that I've uh, obtained over the past five runs. Uh, the also I have a balance of the other uh, BFD uh, bonus as well. Now I don't have the helmet yet. What I plan on doing is I don't have any professions on this class. This goes to show you, you know, <laughs> how easy this game is right now. Uh, I have no professions on this tune. I have never used a single consume. Maybe some mana pots here and there, but other than that, I, I don't I don't use any of that, guys. I just go in raw dog in it, and I do just fine. Um, the build that I'm going for is this. I am a hybrid resto, by the way. I'm not a purebred resto, so that is a difference. Uh, the build that I'm going for in terms of talents is going to be a little different than your standardized, you know, pure restoration healer. Uh, if you guys want to go do that, I mean, it, the same gear applies. You're just going to swap it up a little bit from the actual uh, hybrid DPS heals to pure bread heals. So for example, what I mean by that is Blood Rock Cloak has increased damage and healing by 11, right? So there's times where if we need more healing in the raid or dungeon or whatever we're doing, I will swap to, where is it at? Battle, 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 battle. There it is. The Cape of hemost Hemostats, Stasis, Hemostasis. Yay, yay, yay. This is from the STV event as well. Um, I will also swap to this if I need. Um, this is a really good cloak to have if you're just going for pure healing and you don't care about doing DPS as well. Uh, me personally, I'm not a PvEer. I'm a PvPer. So my build is going to be evolved around that. However, it still is very, very, very viable in PvE. Uh, as you can see on my logs on the thumbnail, I can also show it right here. These are my current logs um, for the raid of Nomergon uh, within the past couple of weeks of me just running the build that I am right now. Um, you can also swap these out for these. I also have these in my bag. Um, so I'll swap that and the cloak out, right? If you're just going for pure heals. These are also really good for just pure healing. But other than that, this is the build that I'm going for. Um, if you're not a PvP -er and you strictly just want a PvE, all you have to do is swap out these uh, set bonuses, right? For the set gear, and you're gonna go full irradiated, irradiated, irradiated. I don't even know how to pronounce this, but yeah, this 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 gear set. You're just gonna go full three tier into this. Uh, what I have right now is the hyperconductive, and then I have the insulated as well. So I have two going into insulated for the damage, um, for the healing bonus and the damage bonus, and then I'm going with the hyperconductive shimmer shirt. And this is solely for the healing and MP5 that I'm going for. I know the MP5 isn't that great right now because I'm currently rocking at 13. So yeah, it's not super crazy, but I mean, it does help a little bit. It goes a long way. But it's solely just for the healing and the stamina because if I were to go with the eradicated robe, I'm losing stamina. We don't want that in PvP, right? Um, if I'm going with the insulated apron, I'm also still losing stamina. Yeah, I get hit. Yeah, I get damage and healing um, with the increased critical strike with Wrath and Starfire. I don't really care for that because I'm not a purebred boomy, right? I'm, I'm kind of a hybrid, so I want a little bit of balance. That's personally what I'm going for. If you guys want to run something different, you guys are more than welcome to. This is just me personally, what I'm going to be running. Um, 
if you guys want to look at something like this, this is what I was talking about, the eradicated, this is exactly what you'd run in PVE. Um, as you can see, it's a slight difference in terms of the spell damage and healing. So you're looking at 236 even, um, and you're looking at 180 and 229. So the damage isn't going to be as high. However, the sustainability of you being alive is going to be a lot higher. Because if you see, I'm looking at almost 2k health. That's just with my own buff compared to 1368 um, if you I don't know if you guys ever seen mages with this but this is what my mage has right now because he's just in leveling gear uh, he's going for rating might convert him into PvP don't know yet uh, but this is exactly how much health and mana he has right now and I'm telling you he just flops it's it's not fun so in PvP especially with how bursty it is right now I'm hoping that gets changed uh, this is gonna help a lot with sustainability and actually making sure that you guys are staying alive so moving into the talents, this is what I'm currently running at the moment. Um, I have five going into an improved wrath, and then I'm running four out of five into tranquil spirit, uh, and then I have one into improved rejuvenation. If you want to go PVE spec, right, you're gonna put three into here, two into here, right? You're just gonna change it up a little bit, um, and I also have one into subletting. Now. The build that I'm going for isn't necessarily complete. I'm not gonna be able to actually enjoy it until level 60. Um, so I'm gonna be branching off into balance and restoration. But right now, uh, I'd be putting one more into this. The next phase, I'd put one more into this and then I'd convert over to the balance tree. Um, but this is solely what I'm gonna be running for restoration. Um, this will stay the same for the entire remainder of Sod. I will not be changing any of this. Uh, but the balance will be changed up a little bit too, but I can get into that into later uh, phases uh, when that time comes. For the runes, um, this is what I'm currently running. I'm running Fury of Storm Rain, Star Surge, Wild Growth, Nourish, and Dream State. Uh, this is honestly a really good setup for a hybrid Boomy or a hybrid Druid, Restoration Druid, uh, not so much Boomy. Uh, for a sole reason, Norish is really good. I've seen a few people talk very down on Norish. Norish is very, very good, guys. You can use this as an insta proc with the Fury, Strom uh, Fury of Storm Rage, right? When you proc it, you get an insta cast on your healing touch. Well, that also happens with Norish. You can do the same thing instead of using on a healing touch, you can use it on a Norish. Um, I can get into rotations after uh, I get done with all of this to kind of explain how I incorporate Nourish and how it's really useful. I also get into downranking spells and whatnot, um, so that'll be later in the video. Uh, something you guys can also consider. So here are some patch notes that I seen yesterday. Um, so as you can see, they're looking at different changes with Life Bloom, uh, reducing it by 50%, and they're also changing how Living Seed works. So moving this around, uh, nope, not this one. Where are they at? Oh, Star Search. We're removing Star Search for Life Bloom. Now this right here, substituting Star Search for Life Bloom is a possibility. Uh, we won't know until it's actually live. So this could be incorporated into the rotation now that it's actually worth casting, maybe, possibly, don't know, don't quote, uh, because of the change of mana. Um, beforehand, Life Bloom was absolutely useless because, I shouldn't say useless, but it just wasn't worth having because of how much mana it cost to cast it. Um, so now that they're reducing that you know, um, mana pool for the actual spell, this could be into a rotation and this could be incorporated. So that's something to really consider of as well. Um, you'd also be removing Fury of Storm Range for Living Seed. So that's another thing that you'd have to consider. Uh, I personally wouldn't be swapping Living Seed from Fury of Storm Range because that defeats the purpose of the hybrid build. Um, however, the Star Surge is a questionable, can I swap this out? Uh, we won't know until, well, I won't know until the actual change happens and we can actually see how it works. Um, Star Surge is really nice right now just because of how low mana it is. It's nice to incorporate that damage. Um, when you're being a hybrid boomy, you're kind of doing damage and healing. Um, the sole propriety of the rotation is just to spam Star, uh, Star the Wrath. I could stumbled over words there, but you're spamming Wrath to get those insta procs. Um, not really spamming anything else until you get like an actual good group, um, especially another good healer with you, a main healer. Um, that can sustain a lot and take a lot. Uh, usually you're running with a priest. I run with priests. Um, I'll sometimes run with a shaman. 
really depends on the scenario and the comp that I'm running with, but nine times out of 10, I'm always running with a priest. And if that priest is geared and knows how to play their class, um, the sustainability is going to be really high. So you're going to be spamming a lot of wraths and you're going to be putting a lot more star surges in. And then you can also incorporate some moon fires. But those are the three things that, you know, you'd really be focusing on. Uh, but in terms of like the retail, or I shouldn't say retail, but like the traditional, you know, this is what I'm running for PVE. Like I said before, you're just putting three into rejuvenation and then putting the two in the tranquil spirit. Um, that's really all there is to talents. Uh, there's not really much to it. Rune swapping, I don't really do that. Uh, this is pretty much the bread and butter, like I said, um, what you're running here for a hybrid boomy. If you're going to be a purebred boomy and you don't care about any of this, just swap up Star Surge for Life Bloom. Um, I would go ahead and just do it now uh, since you're not really casting Star Surge unless you want to put Star Surge and not want to cast that completely up to you. But Fury Storm Range, definitely swap out with Living Seed if you're going purebred restoration. Um, all that really is for restoration, guys, is you're just taking this talent, right? And you're going all the way down into Swift Mend. So ideally what you're running is you're going to be inputting improved regrowth. This regrowth would be nice until later expansions um, because of the bonuses that you'll get from gear i don't know if this is gonna, still going to say the same this could be changed but regrowth is nice to have um, especially if you downrank it but right now swift mend is the purebred you're just going to go all 31 talents into swift mend so that's the purebred resto but let's move on to rotation so that way you guys can get a quick understanding all right you guys so as a resto hybrid um the ideology that i'm going for is your Obviously splitting damage in between healing, um, but the main thing that you're looking at is you're a off healer, right? You're not a main healer. Uh, you're a sustain healer. So what I mean by that is a lot of the spells that you're going to be mainly casting is rejuvenation and wild growth. Those are like the two main spells that you'll see yourself casting. Um, however, there are going to be scenarios where you can top someone off, right? You don't want to solely do damage all the time because you don't want your main healer to go oom and then you're just full of mana doing whatever you need to do um, not that saying that your heals aren't strong enough don't get me wrong i have solo healed some bosses in nomer completely doable as a restoration druid right now um, it's completely fine to be a main healer as a restoration druid however you don't want to resort to that so some things that you can do is i have a full rank into rejuvenation and then obviously full rank wild growth because there's no ranks it's just a rune um, those are the two that you're going to be casting a lot however there's going to be times where the tank might need to get topped off in your low mana. So what I do is I have a rank one rejuvenation and then I use my nourish because it's only 282 mana. Um, this is also going to be changed in mana, by the way, but I've seen some updates. Very nice. Very nice. Um, but anyways, I use the rank one rejuvenation because it only costs 25 mana and you only need a dot. It doesn't matter what dot it is. You just need a dot to actually get the benefits from nourish. So I use a rank one nor or rank one rejuvenation and then cast a nourish to kind of top off the heal or the healer tank main tank whatever. The nourish is mainly used on the people that are kind of low when the rest of the group is not. If that makes sense. With wild growth, it only works and it's only worth using if the whole group is low. I can show you an example right here. So this right here is a good representation. This is a VOD from the last raid that we did on stream. Uh, I'm going to show you a good representation of what to use Nourish and when to use Wild Growth. So right here, we're on Crowd Pummeler. I'm spamming Wrath. I'm going for the Insta procs right now. Just putting some damage into the boss. So as you can see right here, only the tank is taking damage. So what I did is I put a max uh, rank Rejuve on him. And then I'm immediately going to follow that up with a Nourish and top him off. So, and then go right back into damage. There's no point into popping Regrowth there if everybody is full, right? So you just want to mainly put the max rank uh, Rejuve on the tank because they're always going to be taking damage. So there's no reason to put a low rank Rejuve um, on someone like that. Um, however, the scenario for a low rank uh, Nourish is if you're low mana, um, a lot of the times when there's only one person taking damage, you kind of feel the raid out. And if you notice that's happening a lot, put the max rank rejuve on them as well. Otherwise, low rank, nourish, top them off, move on with life. Um, but right here, you can see as the boss is getting ready for the smash, 
a lot of people have taken damage here. Granted, it's not a lot, don't get me wrong, but I'm using this as an example. So I pop Rejuve because Blood is also uh, one of our off tanks. So they're also gonna be taking some damage as well. Um, so I usually rotate the Rejuves on him and then Zerks. Uh, but as you can see, a lot of people took damage. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop a, re a Wild Growth on everybody. And then that's going to go ahead and top everybody off. Also gives the tank, main tank, uh, a little bit more hots to go with. So it keeps everyone kind of up. Um, the whole idea as a Druid is you just, you're providing those hots to keep everybody up. As you can see right here, a lot of people took damage, so I popped my regrowth. That's usually when you want to use it. You don't want to use it uh, for just one person. Um, there are times in later raids where I've used regrowth for two people, and that was for the off tank and the main tank. They both were low. Um, we were running uh, out of mana towards the end. Wild Growth does a lot of instant healing. I wanted to top them off quickly, so that way they are able to continue to pump. Um, if I popped a rejuve, that's slow heals over time. We don't want that. So you really just got to feel out the situation for Wild Growth. Wild Growth, I will only do it for two people. Um, if it's the main tank and the off tank. Any other scenario, I'm using a low rank rejuve into a nourish. Um, tanks are obviously proud. You want to keep them up so you guys just don't wipe. That's just, that's just how it works. But yeah, that's, that's basically the rotation with that. Now, when we're talking about the healing touches, uh, this is a little bit of a different ball game. Um, I'm running a Mac max rank healing touch with a rank five and a rank four. Um, the scenarios on this uh, vary. I've seen a lot of people talk about healing touch, never cast max rank, it's over healing, it's useless, don't listen to them, they're noobs. This is a huge, huge, huge heal. Um, definitely never over healing. Uh, you'll never will over heal unless you're talking about a mage with no health. Um, definitely gonna be able to capitalize on this uh, with a uh, nature swiftness into a max rank healing touch. Um, I usually use this as my oh shit button. Um, this is something that comes in handy a lot, even in PvP scenarios. When it comes to the rank five, rank four, that's just based on you kind of determining, okay, how much health does this person really need? Um, a lot of the times I will cast my instacast on healing touch with somebody that is not really making a lot of effort to take damage, if that makes sense. They're just kind of getting hit here and there. Um, that's when I'll throw a healing touch on them compared to a Norish. The Norish, uh, as we talked about, you know, that's a completely different scenario with tanks or just somebody in general um, that is taking damage. The mana intake that is used through healing touch compared to a Norish is obviously less. So obviously if somebody is, you know, out of the blue taking a small hit and that's just kind of what they're going through, throw a healing touch on them. Um, I will sometimes use this on tanks as well. If they're not really taking a lot of damage and they're able to mitigate a lot of this, um, this is not uh, really nice on my mana pool uh, when I'm doing this as well. So it's really just understanding the field, if that makes any sense whatsoever. The idea, okay, I'm, I'm going to try to break this down just a little bit easier. Rejuve into Nourish on main tanks, right? They're constantly taking damage. This is something that you can do to top them off if they're the only ones hitting uh, are getting hit. Healing touch. If they are getting hit every now and then, but not consistently. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> but that's basically the rotation um, that I kind of incorporate with my Druid personally. I know every Druid's a little different, uh, but me personally, my play style, um, I know it's a little unique compared to what most people do. Um, so if it's not your forte, that's all right. Um, there are other play styles that you guys can adapt to, but this is how I play my Druid personally. I like to do a little bit of both. Um, but for right now in current uh, game, this is really the only spells I'm going to be downranking uh, are my healing touches and rejuvenating. Not until level 60 will I downrank my regrowth. Right now it's sitting at max rank. Uh, I, I hardly ever cast this right now, but I know in later uh, phases uh, this will be downranked. This will be used. Uh, I most likely use uh, five and six as my rank, as my down rank. So I, ironically enough, this will probably stay the same, um, but I will incorporate this into rotations in the future. Uh, but in terms of professions, uh, like I said, I am not running any professions right now. Um, I'm completely blank. 
Uh, when I do plan on getting professions, it's going to be leatherworking and skinning. And then once I hit level 60, I will be dropping skinning and going engineering. Uh, and those will be the two main professions that I will be running for the end game. Uh, I hope that helps. If there's anything I left out, please let me know in the comments. Uh, this is a little bit more of my in-depth guide. Uh, normally my other guides are a lot shorter, but I felt the need to kind of really break this stuff down for some people. Because uh, there's a lot of information, like I said, that's just not being told. Uh, if there's any questions that you guys have, please feel free to leave that in the comment section as well. And I will do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, you can always ask me questions in stream when I do go live. It's random. All that stuff's going to be in the description below. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something new. See you guys next time. It's been Resto, guys.